Hi, my name is Vail Keck, and I am the Director of Music and Arts here at First Rockwell United Methodist Church. I'm so glad you came to join us today as we share scripture, a word, and a prayer around one of our favorite hymns. If you're going about your week and you're thinking about what may be one of your favorite hymns, I encourage you to drop me a line or send me an email. We would love to feature it in this space. This week's hymn is a favorite of one of our long-term members, Natalie Rickards. Natalie has been a member of the Unity Sunday School class and a faithful member of the soprano section of our chancel choir. You may have also seen her in one of our musical theater productions. Today, Natalie's favorite hymn is Let There Be Peace on Earth. Peace. Wow. It just doesn't seem like we have very much of that right now. Our social and political climates are far from peaceful. We live in a time and culture of uncertainty and unrest. And we long for peace. I might even say that our souls crave it in these times. If you're like me, you may be both simultaneously drawn into the drama and intrigue of TV and, and social media posts, but then left exhausted by the noise and busyness of it all. It can be overwhelming, bombarded by news that just breaks our hearts, and inundated with offers and recommendations for far too many options to improve our lives, be it our homes, our health, our relationships, even spending time alone. It's just too much, it seems. And it's robbing us from enjoying what God intended for us. Maybe today we can exa examine to see how to make it stop. And although reducing and simplifying what's going on around us may help, it's truly just not enough. The peace that we yearn for only comes from what God can give. Jesus, called the Prince of Peace, promised his followers a peace that cannot be found in anything offered in this world. In John chapter 14, verse 27, we find Jesus comforting his disciples. Peace I leave with you. May my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And in chapter 16, verse, 20, uh, verse 33, I have told you these thing, things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have come, overcome the world. Let us con consider that the peace we yearn for so desperately begins in that still, small place, in the depths of our souls that has allowed God in and has begun to fully understand God's presence in our lives. It starts with an invitation that becomes endless, ongoing, perpetual, an invita invitation for God to dwell in us. And even more, for us to dwell within God's limitless love. This peace that is promised to us, it demands stillness. A stillness that allows God to speak and for us to listen. Today, friends, regardless of the chaotic and painful situations we may face, let us begin in this moment to place our trust in God's unconditional love for us and unbelievable goodness for our lives. This piece means setting apart time for this relationship to begin, develop and deepen, and to allow God's grace to transform us. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. I believe the author of today's hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth, experienced the fullness of this spiritual journey that we now are challenged to embark on. Jill Jackson Miller said this about writing and context of this hymn. 
1944, when I attempted suicide and I didn't su succeed, I knew for the first time unconditional love, which God is. You are totally loved, totally accepted, just the way you are. In that moment, I was not allowed to die, and something happened to me, which is very difficult to explain. I had an eternal moment of truth in which I knew I was loved, and I knew I was here for a purpose. Thereafter, Jill spent years searching and exploring her spiritual life and allowed her relationship with God to develop. She discovered her love for literature and writing and began penning songs with her husband, Cy Miller, after they married in 1949. Six years later, Jill wrote the words for this hymn, and her husband wrote the melody. The song was written for an international youth retreat in California, which brought 180 students from around the world together. The youth comprised a very diverse group of young people, representing many faiths, political, and social backgrounds. The goal of the week-long experience was to make connections and develop friendships through discussions, workshops, and working together. The song's emphasis on peace and God allowed them to unite the many boundaries within the group. The composer, her husband, Cy Miller, wrote this about the hymn. One summer evening in 1955, a group of teenagers of all races and religions meeting at a workshop high in the California mountains locked arms, formed a circle, and sang a song of peace. They felt that singing the song with its simple basic sentiment, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me, helped create a climate for world peace and understanding. When they came down from the mountain, these inspired young people brought the song with them and started sharing it. And as though on wings, let there be peace on earth, began an amazing journey around the globe. Miller went on to say that it was shared in all 50 states. It was recorded, copied, and printed into songbooks. And eventually it was shared overseas, sung by some of the far-reaching tribal communities in Africa and New Zealand. Like the sharing of this song at that time, if we want peace to reign in our lives, in our communities and, in our, and around the world, it must begin with God, Emmanuel, God with us. And then we let it overflow from our hearts into our homes, our relationships, our conversations, our careers, our text threads, and even our Facebook feeds. Throughout scripture, we are promised peace. Likewise, we are encouraged to do the work of peace. For as we allow it to take over our lives, then we can offer it to others. And in doing so, we become more united with God, the one who created us and loves us beyond all measure. Today, Laura Adkins will be singing our hymn. Lauren grew up in this church. We have been blessed by her talent throughout these years, singing in children's choirs and youth choirs, and now as a vocalist for the Open Door Band and the Inspire Ensemble. As we listen or sing along with Lauren, let's allow today's hymn to serve as our prayer together. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Will you bow your head in prayer with me? Holy and loving God, we come to you searching, aching for your peace. Silence our minds and hearts Allow us to invite you into the places of pain, hurt, and confusion that keep us from knowing your goodness and your love. Through your love, let your peace take root and begin within us, and then in turn, let it be offered to others through us. We pray these things in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.